programme this week. We take an in-depth look at the world of disabled skiing, find out how you can fundraise by skiing on the moon, and the season may be ending, but the summer fun has just begun. Hello and welcome to this week's Snowcast. Now, Ski Club member Ben Clatworthy has a unique perspective on the world of disabled skiing because his brother Stefan discovered the sport thanks to a handy ski. And Ben has put together a special report about his brother and the challenges faced by disabled skiers. Every winter, people flock to the mountains in search of the snow. However, until a few years ago, this luxury was just a dream for many disabled people. Now, though, things are slowly starting to change. This is Stefan Clatsworthy, my brother, who, until five years ago, every year would be left at home as the rest of the family headed off to the slopes. Now, though, he is by far the most skiing mad in the family. Despite being a ski racer, I don't think I can quite match his enthusiasm. Stefan skis in what is most commonly known as a sit ski. The chair is controlled by Thierry Gigonet, who has been helping disabled people to ski for 15 years now. It's a very good feeling to see the people happy. Okay, and then, of course, this makes me happy. So, both ways, you know? Being a ski racer, I'm used to going fast and being in control of my skis. But today, I'm trading them for this, a disabled ski, as I try my hand at something completely different. Now, I wouldn't be lying if I said I'm absolutely terrified about having a go in the chair. I like to be in control, whereas in this, I am 100% reliant on Thierry. <laughs> ah! Well, I'm on a red run now, and I'm going not much slower than I go in my own skis, and we've actually taken air, um, and it, it is quite terrifying, to be honest. I'm actually petrified. Well, that, that was amazing. I, I didn't think it would be quite as good as it was. I was absolutely scared um, at the top, but then once we got going, it was brilliant, and... The École de Ski Français in Les Manuir has eight different kinds of chair and can accept a person with any kind of disability. For 13-year-old Stefan, the possibility of skiing has changed his life. He now looks forward to the winter simply so he can head back to the slopes for another bout of skiing. And how would I describe it? Amazing. Ben Clatworthy, The Snowcast. And if you want to support Disability Snowsport UK, then take part in their 2009 National Skiathon. You can ski three different distances, equivalent to the height of the three highest mountains on the Moon, Venus and Mars. Your money will go to supporting loads of projects for disabled skiers throughout England and Wales. To find a ski slope near you that is running a skiathon, go to disabilitysnowsport.org.uk for more information. Now, just because the winter season in the Northern Hemisphere is drawing to a close, it doesn't mean the skiing has to stop. The Southern Hemisphere winter season starts around June and runs until October, while European glacier skiing is possible all year round at some resorts. Our summer snow reports start on the 7th of May and will be updated twice a week on 45 resorts across Europe, South America, Australia and New Zealand throughout the summer. And if you can't get out to the mountains for a while, then the Ski Club members' end-of-season party is sure to cheer you up. It's at GJ's pub in Wandsworth, London, on the 8th of May, and there's a chance to sip some beers in the sunshine, hopefully, tell some nostalgic tales from your season, and maybe even bust some moves once the night draws in. We'll be there, won't we, Kerry? We certainly will, and we'll hope to see you there too. And now for the snow. So over in Austria, fresh snow is falling at some of the resorts and the temperature has dropped and is currently minus five degrees in Obergurgel and it's snowing at Obertown where they received about five centimetres of new snow. Very good news, same in similar conditions in France really, it's still snowing in mid-April which is fantastic news. Valdez Aventina is still particularly good and um, skiing very well and it looks like there's going to be heavy snow falling next week. Right, and over in Switzerland, the snow conditions are still good at most resorts and upper slopes are offering the best ski conditions. Um, South Fay has got some great skiing and is predicting snow for the start of next week. In Italy, well, half the resorts that we report on are still open. Light snow is expected to fall in the Dolomites next week and heavy snow is forecast in Livigno, so it's going to be a really good end of the season. 
and Endora Fresh Snow has fallen at our reported resorts over there. Arclis, as has Padla Casa, received 15 centimetres of new snow. And moving up to Scandinavia, well, it's spring conditions really in Norway and Sweden at the moment. It's very sunny and warm. Hempstedale is open and it has the deepest snow base, which is 75 centimetres on the upper slopes. And over in Germany, Garmisch and Oberstdorf are still open for skiing, with Garmisch receiving five centimetres of new snow. Unfortunately, Bulgaria and Scotland are now closed, so there's no more skiing in those countries for the rest of the winter. And moving across to the United States, the best of the snow in America at the moment can be found in Colorado. Um, Loveland received up to 60 centimetres of new snow last weekend. And Timberlines also has got a really good deep snow base and there's still good skiing to be found there. Well, Banff, Whistler and Jasper are still open in Canada. In Banff, you can still ski at Sunshine and Lake Louise. And in Whistler and Jasper, well, they've had fresh snow this week. So it looks like the season's going to end with a bit of powder in those resorts. Sounds very nice. And if you want to make the most of the snow before the season ends, we still have some places left on our Bank Holiday Blast. Yes, it is from the 30th of April to the 4th of May. It is in Teen. And if you're interested, then give Ski Fresh Tracks a call. And on Ski TV this week. Check out this year's winning videos and behind-the-scenes blog for the 28-hour Oakley Jib Vid contest. Well, that's it for another snowcast. Yep, and don't forget, have a look at the snow reports online because there's still some great skiing out there. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye.